What's going on, U.S. History people? This is Mr. Norris. And Mr. Lawrence. We have video 38 for you. This one is on the 1920s economic weaknesses, the stock market crash. Then we're jumping ahead to the 1930s with the Dust Bowl. So this is going to be a very depressing video today, but lots of important information to cover. So prosperity in the 1920s. When people think of the 1920s, they think of the roaring 20s and the economy is booming. And that is sort of true as we'll see the gross national product increased by nearly 30 percent that is a lot in a single decade this was brought about by post-world war one economic optimism and confidence and then we also see huge growth in manufacturing talked about in the 1920s video about consumer goods and especially the automobile which you see the assembly line here which increased the amount of goods that are being produced we also see an increase in steel oil and rubber production an increase in corporate profits. And also, finally, an increase in the hiring of workers and unemployment was at a low of about 3%, which is just ridiculously low, very hard to come by. All right, so let's talk about the stock market. So Mr. Norris, you just gave us a great rundown of how prosperous the time was of the 1920s economically, or so we should think. So tied into the economy is the stock market. So what is the stock market all about? Well, it's an opportunity for people to buy and sell stocks. And what are stocks, Mr. Norris? That's right. Those are individual pieces of companies that people can buy and invest. By 1920 to 1929, we saw an increase in the value of the overall stock market. So more Americans began to invest. By 1920, there were 318 million shares traded in the United States. And by 1929, nine years later, you're up to 1 billion shares that are being traded annually. So buying stock was happening on margin, and on margin really meant buying on credit. So what was happening as Americans were trying to buy more stock, to make more money, to invest, many couldn't afford to buy stock, so they would take a loan to buy their stocks. And if their stocks perform well, they could pay back that loan. The only problem is when many, many people start to do this, the stock market becomes artificially inflated and the value is not really what it should be. So in 1929, we see the stock market crash. It was known as Black Tuesday, October 29th, 1929, which resulted in massive selling of stocks. Almost $14 billion of value would be lost in a single day of trading. So many people were trying to get rid of their stocks in order to um, not see their value continue to decrease. You can see a continued mass selling and a decline for months in the American stock market. This will help to trigger the Great Depression. Mr. Norris, is the stock market crash the cause of the Great Depression? Start of Great Depression, not necessarily the cause. So it was one of other underlying causes we'll talk about in a few minutes. But also we lost a sense of economic optimism and prosperity that happened after World War I is now coming to an end in 1929. All right, jumping over to underlying economic weaknesses. These are your causes of the Great Depression. So agricultural sector will see a drop in prices. This will be due to overproduction of goods. Speculation means that you're buying something in the hopes of selling it at a higher price. That is going to occur in the stock market and real estate, which will artificially inflate values. And then there are numerous bank failures. And this led to eventual run on banks, which mean, meant that people ran to their banks and tried to withdraw their money and then many banks went bankrupt. In 1929, we saw the start of underconsumption or people not buying as many goods. There was less demand for consumer goods and inventory started to build up. Unequal distribution of wealth is a huge cause of this. 40% of Americans in the 1920s lived in poverty and 1% of the population owned 59% of US wealth. And when they stopped spending money, that contributed to a slowdown in the economy. 87% of the population owned 10% of the US wealth. That's a pretty staggering number. And then there were government policies such as support for big business and the wealthy. And in times of crisis, they were unable to support Americans in need as we'll see when we get to the Great Depression. So would it be wrong to say the 1920s were really good for the wealthy? Very good for the wealthy. So. The economy overall sounded good, but it wasn't really impacting everybody at this time. So unfortunately, we're going to see for farmers, they were one of the first people directly impacted by the Great Depression, but even prior to it. Less demand for American agricultural goods following World War I saw a decrease in agricultural prices and less money coming in for American farmers. We saw an increase in American farm foreclosures, which really meant people losing their farms. In the 1930s, we also have a Dust Bowl, so really a natural disaster happening at the same time we're seeing an economic disaster start. It was a drought in Kansas, Texas, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Colorado. And you can see a picture here 
of what is going to happen combined with overuse of soil giant dust storms would cross the great plains and really destroy people's farms and crops this forces migration of farmers from the midwest to places like california so migration of farmers to california and they would be known as okies also a cultural connection john steinbeck a famous author of the time will publish a book titled the grapes of wrath that really outlines some of the struggles of people during the dust bowl all right, guys, that's it for this video. We look forward to seeing you back for the next one. Thanks for watching. Best of luck on all your tests, and have a good day.